Let's take a look at and prune a young three-year-old apple tree, the variety Golden Russet, uh, sometimes called American Golden Russet. It's the second oldest apple bred in the United States, dating back to the early 1800s, the Hudson River Valley in New York State. And um, it is a really good apple. Sometimes when I eat one, and the way I like to eat it is I get a pocket knife and I get my apple and I'm, I'm sitting in a coffee shop and I'm just looking at it, uh, enjoying the look and the anticipation of the flavor. People might be looking at me funny. And then I cut it slice by slice and eat it slowly. And when I finish, sometimes I think, you know, that's the best darn apple I've ever eaten. It's a pretty utilitarian apple. It's good for eating fresh out of hand, yeah. It's good for drying, as most russets are. And it uh, cooks well, bakes up a mean pie. And it's a great apple because of its juiciness for cider, whether it's soft, sweet cider, or hard cider. So American golden russet, golden russet. Three-year-old tree being grown to a modified central leader. Let's look at the basic elements of form we have in place here, and let's prune and train it. The central leader, the reference is to the trunk, the vertical axis. Now in the end, I want about a seven or eight foot tree with two tiers of branches. I have the first one fully formed here. Let's look at it. There are one, two, three, four, and a fifth primary scaffolds. Really well distributed in terms of being equidistant from one another around the 360 degrees of the trunk and have good vertical spacing as well. Both of those elements, horizontal and vertical spacing, allow for plenty of light, alleys of light down into the core of the tree to keep the fruit wood lively down low and in the middle of the tree. Uh, these branches are of about equal vigor, which is good. They come up and out, and they're growing at about a 60 degree angle. Again, upright growth is vegetatively vigorous. Flat growth is fruitful. Something in between, something in the 45 to 60 degree angle is the best of both worlds. So early on, the previous years, I liked the more upright nature of this, but shortly after I prune this, I'm gonna train these branches out a tick. Slow down further growth, induce fruiting, and maybe as importantly, to allow more light into the core of the tree. Okay, let's look at it for pruning. And let me just say, as beautiful as this tree is, uh, it's often the case that what you're going to be doing on one branch is identical to what you're going to do on the other branches. Uh, and the more there's uh, an equalness to the branches, the more that's true. So let's use this one as our first example. Um, this is again a three-year-old tree. And if you can see here, there's a little bit of a pruning wound from last winter where this was headed, cut back. And if you go up to the tip, that's how much it grew last year. Pretty good for a three-year-old tree, 15, 18 inches. And then we come down to older wood. All along this older run, we have different manifestations of fruit buds. Here's one. Here's one. Here's a nice short stout branch with a couple, three, four, five, six fruit buds on and on down the line. So this branch, this tree, and this branch, and by extension this tree, is set up to be highly fruitful this year, its fourth year. Uh, and so what do I want? What are my goals? My goals with the branches in the first tier is to extend them yet more another couple, three feet. Uh, up and out and a whole bunch of nice lateral fruit wood behind the new growth. So I'm going to head or prune and I'm going to head a little more, this is still a pretty heavy cut, uh, I'm going to head a little more than 50% of its length. I'm going to head it to an outward facing bud to continue the direction uh, of growth up and out into the light and I'm going to do it about like this. Let me prune this whole branch and then I can move around quickly and prune, prune the rest. So I'm, I'm, I'm expecting growth and lateral branching and fruit bearing. And I'm gonna come down the line here and I'm gonna look at my 
different expressions of fruit buds and laterals with fruit buds. I'm going to make a few adjustive cuts and I'll make comments before I cut. Uh, let's go down this side. Uh, here we have a lateral coming up and out, a lot of fruit buds along its run, and you want to keep your laterals simple. You don't want a lot of branching, so I'm going to thin that little side shoot there as well as this. Just bear mostly on the main lateral branch here. This is good enough. This is okay, but it's encroaching on the next uh, branch here. So I'm going to make a different type of heading cut, which is called a shortening cut, where you cut into older wood, and that's evident by your cutting to some express fruit buds. And the how long is a function of, well, what do I think I can support weight-wise here, but also what allows light down between these two branches. And that's the call I'm making right now. I'm um, coming out here, I'm good. I'm coming out here, I'm good. I'm coming down here. Now this is good, and yet it's too complicated for a lateral. And isn't this the way? I like the positioning of this extension, but I like the fruitiness of that. Fruit rules. I'm going to thin that out and shorten that a bit. We're good. So I have a couple branches on this side. Uh, this looks like it got injured, gone. And if I have my laterals too long, they will bear out towards the tip, splay out, splay down, become serious saggers, and even break. So I'm going to kick this back a notch by making a shortening cut to a fruit bud. So that's what I'm going to do around the tree, and I'm just going to shut up and cut. One more here, and it's more of the same. I'm good. Now I'm going to address the central leader here. Let me step around to the other side of the tree. Again, it's all about your goals, your projection. What kind of tree do you want to grow? And what I want to grow here is a central leader that goes up maybe another three feet and then has a second tier of branches as we have here, but importantly, lesser in number and lesser in length so that we can maintain that narrow top, wide base as if it were an isosceles triangle. That's a form that gets light into the core of the tree. So I'm going to make a heading cut and you can see this is kind of leaning this way, so I'll make a cut to a bud going in that direction, uh, like that. My hope is that it will grow two feet, and then next winter, I will make a heading cut up at the tip of that and form a second weak tier of primary scaffold branches. I'll have my fully formed, two-tiered, seven, eight foot tall, modified central leader. I'll be eating a lot of apples come October, November this year. It's a late cropper and all the more in the ensuing years. I've pruned this tree and I'm, I'm liking it, but I want to love it. So I'm going to just train it a bit. Uh, let's look at my goals and then I'll insert the training devices. Again, I'd like a little more space between the central leader and these primary branches. Uh, my objectives there are two, more space, more light, more fruit down below. And again, by bringing the branch down a tick or two, I slow down extension growth and I, this is hormonally driven, I accentuate fruit development. So I'm just going to insert this wooden spreader here just a bit. Uh, let's look at 
the other primary scaffolds. I'm uh, fine with this. It's a little flatter angle, as is this. Let's move this one a tick. And this would be good to put down a notch as well, if I can. We're good.